I've had a look at boat arrival statistics since 2005. They peaked in 2015 during the previous coalition government and have come down since. The Albanese government's Operation Sovereign Borders policy is unchanged from the coalition's. But Peter Dutton is seeking to stir up unrest in Australians by his dog whistle line of Albanese being weak on borders. Why isn't the media correcting Dutton? OK, well, Melon Deere, you're a former journalist. Very, very good question. And uh, I, I totally think that's an important point that does need to be picked up. Uh, we, we are seeing here um, politics play into an issue that uh, uh, certainly both sides have said previously that uh, the, the protection of Australia is one that should be above politics. And what we are seeing now is exactly that, that politics is playing into it. OK, Geraldine? I just think Peter Dutton... His immediate reaction to anything is a snarl. He's like the Tasmanian <laughs> devil of Australian <laughs> politics. I mean, I was really surprised that he could find it in his heart to congratulate Albo on getting engaged to be married. He just takes a negative view of everything that comes he up. He wants an invite to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. But... <laughs> But, OK, there's some things he is positive about, perhaps, that he's more enthusiastic about. He, there has been a boat arrival. 39 people have arrived. 39 poor souls, you know. Uh, and at least this time we got to see them instead of having them taken out of public view where we can dehumanise them and demonise them. Now, we saw who they were just people looking for a better life have been exploited by boat traffickers and people smugglers. Mm. And so where's the humanity? I just want to bring you in, Julian. <laughs> because at the heart of this question is uh, the idea of truthful reporting and facts. Operation Sovereign Borders continues. Why has the opposition leader sought to make political hay with this? Well, the opposition leader's job is to hold governments to account. That's his job. And we remember the last Labor government where we saw 50,000 people coming on 800 boats, where we saw 1,200 deaths at sea. The fact is, since this government has come to power, we've already had 300 people come in this fashion. There's 39 people who actually reached the mainland. This wasn't one of the offshore islands. They, they came to no, the mainland. And they've they were already offshore already. That they, yes, and, and, but they, they reached the mainland, and, and that is a failure of the border protection process. It's but it's a not, failure is it a failure seeing. to control well, the borders? It is a failure to control the borders. It is because the Operation Sovereign Borders um, processes have changed, and they've changed because you can see the government is reducing the amount of money that's being put into operations. But it's not borders. reducing the amount of money. It's public. $600 million. Figures have been published today to refute that claim. Well, $600 million in the government's own budget estimates over the Ford estimates, starting with $28 million this year, uh, is coming out of the Operation Sovereign Borders. Also, in the annual report okay. of the department, you can see that the, there is a reduction on the, in the surveillance that's, that's occurring. So this has occurred because the government is not being as strong as we were in government about operations. Oh, well, Harry, you heard the, the answer from the opposition in Peter D Dutton's team of how they frame this debate. So you talk about truthfulness. Uh, obviously, there are contesting ideas, contested ideas here. The... The, the issue I have is um, Mr. Lisa's talking about forward estimates, but if you look at the numbers from, from 2022-2023, there are a, a big decline from 2015, and, you know, we've had 40 people this year. If Peter Dutton raises this in the public awareness and to these people smugglers, you know, it gives them, a, 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 gets them thinking, you know, let's try this on. I think we should stop this social incohesion. It just isn't good for Australia. OK, thank you, Harry, for joining us. I want to pick up back to you, Julian, because it's, that's not just Harry's idea, and Harry's a citizen and is entitled to his views, but it's actually the head of the Australian Border Forces view, too, that these comments are unhelpful. He has intervened twice now in this debate, first to suggest that, you know, suggesting that Operation Sovereign Borders isn't operating is inaccurate and, and doesn't... It's not helpful. And today he, he's actually intervened to say that the most... Um, amount of money being spent on border force is happening now since 2015. So the comment you make has but, been refuted by but, but the, the point border is, force. You, you, both things can be true. You can have more money being spent 
but less money than was originally planned to be spent, which, no. is, which is the point that we're making. Um, <laughs> the point that we're making is over the Ford estimates they'd originally committed to an extra $600 million, that has been, that has been cut back. Uh, and you've also had the reduction in, in surveillance. Getting the borders right is really important for public confidence in the migration program. And it's very important for the opposition to hold the government to account on this. This is the same government that is mishandling our migration policy. But, We've but seen it in relation really to the detainees that, that, that have been released. The government has lost control over the borders. Well, you've, you've had people who have come to Australia uh, by boat and landed on the mainland. But is that a loss of uh, control of all of the is, borders? That, that, that is a loss of control of the borders. The okay. whole point of Operation Sovereign Borders is, is to stop people landing on the mainland. All right, Yelena, you, um, obviously there is a disagreement about what the, that boat landing means. Yeah. Oh, look, for me, uh, uh, I'm a refugee and, and I was a refugee twice. I came to this country when I was 11 years old and this country gave me uh, and my family an opportunity, an opportunity that, you know, I wouldn't be here today and be able to accomplish anything in life and who knows, maybe not even be alive if I did not get that opportunity. So I think, yes, it is about protecting the borders, but I think it's also about not turning it into a negative and straight away having this negative conversation about people actually trying to come in and, and trying to look for a better life. It's more about how do we solve this problem and give people an opportunity to come to Australia because Australia is, no, is known, and certainly when I travel overseas, as, as such a welcoming country, whether it's sport or whether it's anything outside of it. So I think we need to kind of have an open mind in general because I would like to see, you know, more people have the opportunity that I got as well. So I'm coming from it from a bit of a more maybe human perspective as well. I think we can, we can kind of have both. I don't think it has to be one or the other. Mm. Here. Gideon, Australia may be an island, but we are certainly an island that perhaps has exported some of the policies to other countries, including, including the United Kingdom, where they are embarking on uh, pretty tough border policies. How do you view a story like this? Does it sound to you like, you know, a loss of control of the Australian border? Well, look, uh, maybe it is, but it's a loss of control that the British government would be delighted by because, you know, frankly, 39 people, that would be a good day in the English Channel. <laughs> you know, we have hundreds of people crossing a week, uh, many thousands a year. It's a just much smaller uh, stretch of water, so it's much easier to get to the UK. And it's correct that the UK government, with some Australian political advisers in the background, has kind of tried to model itself on what Australia has done. I almost laughed when I saw Rishi Sunak, our Prime Minister, standing in front of a lectern with stop the boats on it. And I thought, you know, an Australian has been advising you. Um, <laughs> but uh, but he, uh, he's failed. You know, you, if, if you're going to make that kind of pledge, you have to be able to deliver. And again, following the Australian model, we've attempted to go for what they politely call offshore processing. In our case, sending refugees to Rwanda, uh, where they would be resettled, even if their asylum claims are approved. But it's just been absolutely impossible to get the Rwanda scheme off the ground. It's been challenged in the courts. Uh, so it's become a bit of a fiasco. So I think something that Sunak may have felt about strongly about, but also I think saw as a potential election winner, if he could prove effective on it, because he's been so ineffective, he's managed to kind of rile the public up and get them very upset by the, the, the numbers of people crossing the channel without actually looking effective at dealing with the problem. So it's a kind of double whammy for him. And a final thing is, you know, just as the British would say to the Australians, you know, what's your problem? Uh, we've got hundreds of more, you know, of people coming across the channel. If you're Italian or Greek, they look at Britain and say, you know, a few hundred? We've got thousands coming across. This is a, a global problem. And to some extent, Australia, uh, you know, is protected just simply because it's so hard to get here.